Ahead on primetime, Department of Corrections, now the Department of Connections, several debt corps officers, among others, charged in court. Plus, already millions in lawsuits filed against the church. How much more will it cost to hire a middleman to act as a mediator? And a local group fired up on the plans for Anderson's Northwest Field. Nestor Lecanto has the story. Off day and good evening. From the Department of Corrections to the Department of Connections, several DOC officers arrested for allegedly accepting bribes to bring in drugs and contraband. It's the Minilao compound appeared in court this afternoon. And according to court documents, all of it took all it took was cold hard cash to bring contraband into what's supposed to be one of the most secure places on island. One by one, the suspects busted for a scheme to bring in drugs to the Department of Corrections appeared before Judge Ben Sison for their magistrate's hearing. You are innocent until proven guilty. Court documents laying it all out. Two inmates who were in the special housing unit were busted with cell phones. Bruno Simmons and Sean Paul Johnson were allegedly in constant communication with several people on the outside and inside prison walls, specifically DOC officers. Phone records showed conversations or text messages with DOC officers Frankie Rosalind, Jeff Limo, Furman Maritita, Edward Chrysostomo, Jerry Hokog, DPW employee Ron Menno, and civilian Roxanne Hokog. The officers were allegedly receiving payments in some instances up to two grand to smuggle in contraband such as cell phones, tobacco, and illegal substances in the prison for DOC inmates. The text messages referenced in the case took place between May and the end of July. The inmates had so much access that they were even given the heads up when shakedowns were going to occur. As for who owned the cell phones, court documents only noted that one of them was registered to Menno, who would work with inmate Simmons to bring in drugs and then work with Limo to move him and inmate Johnson from post to post in exchange for cash. The suspects who appeared in court today were released on house arrest and $10,000 personal recognizance bond. They were also ordered to return to court on September 14th. We should note that Officer Chrysostomo was also charged in federal court for possession of a firearm by a prohibited person. On Thursday, ATF officers found inside a DOC transport van assigned to Chrysostomo a firearm that is not allowed on Guam. And get this, this same illegal firearm was assigned as his duty service weapon. Additionally, Chrysostomo admitted he was a drug user since early 2011, and since returning back to work in March of this year, he'd been smoking the drug ice on a weekly basis and even before reporting for work this past Thursday. Court documents state Chrysostomo had been with DOC for a total of nine years with a break in service of three. He was reemployed five months ago. DOC has almost 30 active investigations since January involving illegal contraband making its way on the ins into the inside. But the person who was tasked to conduct those investigations is one of those accused. Jeff Limo has been with DOC for almost three decades, serving as head of internal affairs and other leadership positions, including officer in charge of transports. Police also arrested Deb Corps officer Jerome St. Nicholas on charges of official misconduct, conspiracy to promote prison contraband and possession of a Schedule One substance. He's since been released and issued a notice to appear. Well, a former DOC guard fighting his termination will have his appeal with the Civil Service Commission heard next month. Benjamin Urquizo was back before the commission on Thursday. He was the only officer fired from the department following an internal affairs investigation into the brutal beating of post-6 detainee Justin Menno. His GFT representative, Robert Koss, submitted evidence that includes interviews with prison employees, which he contends does not support the outcome of the investigation. Depcor let him go, citing failure to perform his duties the day of the attack. However, Kizu argues he did everything he could do to help Menno that day. A hearing on the merits is set to begin on September 14th. This just into our newsroom late today. First responders called to the Summer Green Apartments in Timuning. A man, his age unknown, reportedly falling from a third floor balcony and transported to the Guam Memorial Hospital. The man's name has not yet been released, but just before news time, it was no made known that he was unconscious and unresponsive and no CPR was conducted en route to the hospital. Well, how deep do their pockets go? The Archdiocese of Agania likely to go for broke due to the millions of dollars in lawsuits it faces from decades worth of clergy sex abuse. The majority of the cases are anticipated to be settled out of court, giving getting a private mediator to serve as a middleman will come at a hefty price tag. That was the issue raised in court today and why the chief judge herself is proposing a cheaper alternative. Here's more. Private mediator or sitting judge? Parties in the nearly 100 cases of clergy sex abuse could save thousands of dollars if they opt for the latter. 
I was told uh, by uh, my colleagues that the rate that is being proposed for this private mediation is a $10,000 per day fee just for the mediator. That's according to Defense Attorney Jackie Turlahi, who represents Archbishop Anthony Afron. Plaintiff's Attorney David Lujan, meanwhile, staying mum on the price of his chosen mediator. Oh, I can't say it, you know. Is it $10,000? Whatever it is, it is. Not only is he an experienced mediator, his services would be at no expense to parties. Parties agreed to consider her recommendation, but only after meeting with Oregon-based private mediator and retired federal judge Michael Hogan on September 5th in Hawaii. The chief judge, being her first time hearing the cases, sounded optimistic for global settlement. Parties post-hearing, however, didn't sound convinced. Well, you know, it's not that the judge is suggesting that we have a global settlement, but because of the nature of the case, seeing the many plaintiffs that there are, the many defendants that there are, that there is a hope that there would be some form of global settlement. But this is all very prospective and potential. It's not something that is set in stone whatsoever. We're not interested in that global settlement. We want individual settlements, you know, because each client's, each client's injury is different from other clients. So you can't, you know, just get a number that's cleared up a hundred times. Though Terlahi has made it clear her client wouldn't participate in settlement talks, she advised the court that she is open to the chief judge's suggestion, but will wait and see what parties come up with after meeting with Hogan in Hawaii. Still is a scam. Apron is a scam. You see now that Apron is willing now to, to get into the settlement discussions? Huh? A hearing on Aperon's motion to dismiss is set for August 29 in the federal court. According to the court's count, there are 78 cases of clergy sex abuse filed in the District Court of Guam and 18 cases filed in the Superior Court of Guam. Parties will return to court on September 12 to advise on whether they'll be in need of Judge Munson's services. Well, the contract has been awarded for a $78 million live fire training range seen as critical to the marine relocation. Black Construction will design and build the complex at Anderson's Northwest Field. But as Nestor Laconza reports, the project has come under fire from one local group who says it's a threat to one of the most pristine ecosystems in northern Guam. The 700-acre range complex will be a key to the marine presence because of its role in keeping them always at the ready. Of the 5,000 troops that will eventually transfer here, two-thirds will be on six-month training deployments. Marine spokesman Captain Tim Patrick. I can tell you that the range is a very important tool to keep Marines proficient. And at the end of the day, that's really what we have to do here. But there are others who believe Retidian is equally important to the local environment. Sabine Perez is the spokesperson for Protehi Letekzan. Those areas are culturally valuable to the Chamorro people. Uh, they should be intact and remain um, uh, protected. Uh, and the live firing range there is, there's no, that's no place for a live fire training range. The complex will be situated completely within the current military footprint. And Major Patrick says they have met stringent federal environmental requirements in preparing it. Of that, only about 315 acres um, will be um, developed specifically for the range parts it themselves. And of that, only 89 acres, 13% of the original 700, only 89 acres is the actual limestone forest. Activist Kelly Marsh is familiar with the military's mitigation efforts, including the pledge to restore one acre of pristine land for each acre it disturbs. But Marsh still opposes any development at all at Retidian. Are we really in this together, or is it our community is asked to sacrifice something when a third of our island has already been sacrificed, when four or five live fire training ranges already exist on island? We've heard the concerns uh, from the group, and uh, we think we understand them. And what's interesting is that uh, many of those concerns feed right into uh, many of the mitigation efforts that we already have underway and that we have planned for. And now the contract has been let and the project is moving forward. But the Protehi group says it's not ready to give up just yet. The bulldozer is in their court. Are they going to intentionally, knowingly destroy these sites? It's really a balancing between um, national security missions and then um, 
just working coherently with the community. It really takes the will of a collective group of people to do this, and that's what we're asking um, our leaders to do. It's not too late. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. A total of 52 out of 311 infants have been screened for tuberculosis at the Guam Memorial Hospital since a response effort began at GMH on Thursday. Fortunately, no evidence of TB has been detected in any of the babies. However, GMH continues to have difficulties contacting families whose infants may have been exposed to an active case of TB at the hospital nursery between April 1st and August 8th. Families of infants born between those dates are encouraged to call GMH at 647-2552 to find out if their child needs to be screened. Well, stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Have you gotten paid yet? That's the premium automatic insurance deduction plan from Calvo's Insurance. Paid simplifies your home and auto insurance. No down payment. No more long lines. And you can stretch your payments up to 12 months. Paid is convenient. It deducts from your payroll, your checking account, or your credit card. With Paid, you get up to 65% off your car insurance and enjoy lifestyle club discounts. Life can be easier when you get paid. Call Calvo's Insurance today and save on your home and auto insurance. This is Tabby. Tabby. Tabby's service provider is it &E. This allows her to walk on campus without having to rely on Wi-Fi. Hey, Abby. Tabby. Hey, I sent you to it student plan just like you. I love how affordable their plan is. I'm so glad I switched to it &E. What? Get up to 5 gigs a month for just $30 and the first three months free at it &E. and Chuck E. Cheese's Guam is not all fun and games. Our pizza is delicious with the freshest toppings, oven baked to order. Try the fresh salad bar, sandwiches, and don't forget our mouth-watering wings. Come and eat at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. For 20 years, Matson has been an important part of our everyday lives. Bringing in the cars we drive, the food we eat, and the materials that helped build our homes. From caring for our land through the Adahi Itanu program to generously supporting our local charity, Matson has contributed to the preservation and growth of our island. On behalf of those you've served throughout your 20 years on Guam, you do a seat, Matson. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. Well, running for office may require some extra hurdles if one Guam lawmaker has his way. He's working to create policy that could change the election playing field. Valerie Maige reports. With election season looming, freshman Senator Joe St. Augustine has created legislation that could shake up the pot of potential candidates. Bill 163 requires stricter screening of candidates via the District Court of Guam and would pick up on any court activity and convictions. Mayoral candidates will also have to live in the village they want to represent at least five years. Current law only requires one year of residency. But the most controversial of Bill 163's proposed requirements, if you want to run for office, you may have to quit your day job. Current Guam law allows for the governor's special or staff assistants, as well as GovGuam appointees, to run for public office. San Augustine proposes they resign, just like other GovGuam employees who have to give up their jobs to run for office. The legislation already receiving the thumbs up from residents like Dededo's Jennifer Villaverde. She supports a stronger vetting of potential candidates and agrees that it's fair for appointees or special staff to quit their jobs. I think it would be better for the people than at least the people who are running to represent them would actually be people who can represent them. I mean, if you're making it stricter for us to apply for a Guam driver's license, what more running as for a position such as mayor or whatnot. If you have other priorities and your priority isn't the people, I mean, you are getting paid to be in that, that position. Isu Mendiola disagrees. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that. Um, one reason is the people who are already there didn't have to go through that scrutiny. And so what makes it okay for them to set the bar to a higher standard now, right, doesn't make sense. 
He does, however, think it's only fair for mayoral candidates to really get to know their constituents and their village. I believe that if you're going to run for mayor, then you should know the village. You should be a resident of the village in order to know what the concerns are and what the you know, what the problems are that you need to solve to help the people of the village out. Aside from stronger vetting of candidates, the same bill proposes Election Day to be a holiday to encourage higher voter turnout. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Valerie Maige. Thanks, Val. Dead Atulai that were pulled from the waters off the Haganyabo Basin nine days ago were not tested by Guam EPA as they found insufficient reason to proceed with testing. According to GIPA spokesman Nick Lee, there were several factors that led to this decision, including the marina not showing any signs of contamination, as well as reported sewage or stormwater overflow. Lee adds the condition of the fish sample collected at the site was not consistent with a fresh or recent fish killed. Lee says observations of other marine life in the area revealed only a two-lie were affected, leading officials to rule out pollution or contamination. The initial investigation stems from a complaint by local fishermen of a net that they were complaining of a net that was in the water for eight days. The Port Authority of Guam has since stepped in and now only allows throw net and rod and reel fishing in the area. Guam lawmakers have less than a week to pass the supplemental budget. But with only four working days to get it right, some lawmakers are still struggling with wrapping their heads around the more conservative numbers. They now have until August 31st to decide. After concerns were raised earlier this week over the federal government's plans to take back 80 acres of land in Jigo and how that could impact the military's net negative commitment to GovGuam, Joint Region Marianas maintains it is still on track to reach net negative. Issa Baza has more. The controversy surrounds the 80-acre marble property in Jigo. Earlier this week, Superintendent John Fernandez questioned whether the federal government's plans to take back the property and possibly use it for military purposes would impact the military's net negative commitment to the people of Guam. As a remedy, he's asking the federal government to instead consider swapping the marble property for land in Dedido. We know there's an overall agreement with the government of Guam uh, about a net negative uh, impact from the military buildup. And because of that, we understand that if 80 acres is going back to the military, that's a positive 80 acres going to the military. We would like to see an 80 acres uh, being reduced, you know, in the area that we've identified closer to Dededo. However, Joint Region Mariana's spokesperson Greg Kuntz maintains that even with the return of the marble property to Department of Defense control, the military will still achieve its net negative commitment to reduce its footprint by 654 acres as compared to February 2011. The Jigo property is being reverted back to federal control after GovGuam's failure to use the property for educational purposes over the past 25 years. Unfortunately, it was before our time and there was no real traction to build a high school in that site. The property also holds three high-producing water wells operated by Guam Water Works Authority. Kunt said the Navy is aware of the wells and will work to ensure the wells continue to serve the Guam community. He added the DOD did not express interest in using the property specifically for the military buildup, but that because the land is being reverted back to the federal government, the Navy will accept custody of the parcel due to its proximity to the planned Marine Corps training complex at Anderson South. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Issa Baza. A settlement agreement in the $7 million lawsuit filed by Superintendent John Fernandez against the Guam Education Board remains tied up due to an issue over whether or not legislative approval is required to move forward. Fernandez's attorney, Delia Lujan Wolf, argued in court today that the settlement would not require legislative approval because remedy could be provided through Fernandez's employment contract. However, Assistant Attorney General Kenneth Orr could argued that legislative approval may be required due to the amounts involved. The Guam Education Board had previously committed to paying Fernandez's legal fees up to $60,000. Chief Judge Francis Sadingo Gatewood gave the parties up until September 7th to decide whether to settle the lawsuit. Well, Chris, Superintendent Fernandez is hoping to show a united front as the department considers seeking reconsideration for Guam's special conditions associated with its high-risk status designation. He visited the nation's capital to discuss the matter with federal officials along with the Guam Education Board member Mark Mendiola earlier this month.
the white elephant in the room is the $3 million elephant when it comes to uh, paying for a third party fiduciary. Right now we pay a third party fiduciary agent to um, assist us with uh, basically to manage the federal funds and also to assist us with the implementation of a comprehensive corrective action plan. That special condition has been in place for several years. However, Fernandez says he believes the department is 80 to 90 percent complete with its comprehensive correction action plan and is demonstrating significant progress in the areas of procurement, fixed assets and financial audits. He says he hopes to make a formal request to reconsider the department's special co conditions by the end of the calendar year. A commissioning ceremony was held today for the three newest officers in the Guam National Guard, including the island's second female infantry officer assigned to the Delta Company as a platoon leader. Colonel Ronnie Delphin and Brigadier General Roderick Leon Guerrero spoke at today's ceremony. These three young warriors have stepped forward to take on the challenge of being the leader in the United States Army in a time when the world has much contention and turmoil. Today, candidates, you become part of a very small fraction of the U.S. population chosen and trained to take our Army and this organization into the future. The three officers recognized that today's ceremony includes 2nd Lieutenant Estella Bloss, 2nd Lieutenant Bernadette Regis, and 2nd Lieutenant Christian Dazon. All right, congratulations to the three of them. Well, coming up, Dave Delgado has a dial rent to own Athlete of the Week, but first, here's a look at weekend weather. From the network that brought you up to three times more data comes the dawn of a new data. The epic story of Guam's only network brave enough to give 10 free gigs of bonus data on every line every month to customers who bundle their services. Reviewers are calling the offer totes awesome, best deal ever, and yes. Visit GTA.net for details. At Shell, it's about offering more than just fuel. It's about providing service to people. From hot coffees to warm welcomes, from clean bathrooms to fresh food, we're on a mission to make you leave happier than when you arrived. So whatever your journey, we're here. Welcome to service. Welcome to Shell. Serving the islands for over 30 years. Share your story at Shell Foodies Guam on Instagram and Facebook. Hashtag Station Stories. Hashtag Shell Guam. How do you show up? Do you just bring it? Or do you bring it all? Focus. We gotta go. Third row, like a pro. Step up to GMC with 15% below MSRP on all 2017 Acadia SLT models. That's nearly $7,000 below MSRP on this Acadia. Visit Autospot GMC today. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching on the show tonight, your IFL football schedule. And then we're going to flash it back for all you UOG Tritons. There's a reunion this weekend. But first off, your Dorrent's own Athlete of the Week. Check it out. We're here at Dar Rensone, Mingila, for our Dar Rensone Athlete of the Week. Today we have 11-year-old motocross racer Lawrence Limtiaco, and here to present him with a check is Paul. Paul? Congratulations, Lawrence, on your selection of the Dar Rensone Athlete of the Week. Who would you like to donate this check to? Big brothers, big sisters. You've been racing for about three years now. Tell us how you got your start with the whole motocross scene, and uh, what is it about the sport that you enjoy so much? Uh, I enjoy jumping and racing and my dad got me into it when I was growing up I go to the races and he would pack me on his bike and I just said I wanted to try and ride and and then I I liked riding and then I said I want to try and race 
You just recently won the 65cc and 85cc class in the Monster Energy Motocross Series. How did that feel, winning two races in one day? felt good. In the 85, it was pretty muddy, and uh, a few people crashed in the 85. In the 65, we had to cut a, we had to race a modified track, and that was that one was a good track. What are some of the things you have to adjust racing in uh, muddy conditions? We have to lower the tire pressure to get more grip, and you just you can't spin up your wheels too much. Pretty much sewing up the 65 cc class uh, for this year's race series. How does that feel being champion in that in that division? It feels good and happy. This year we tried to, or we wanted to win the 65 cc class for or the last year that I was going to be on that bike. So we got that done. Moving up to 85 cc for next year's racing season. What do you think that's going to be like, and what are you going to set goals for yourself uh, in that division? It's going to be tough. I'm, uh, I want to just like get a championship in that too. Uh, and the kids are older, so they're faster. I just want to have fun and race good. I know there's a lot of people you'd like to thank that have helped you along your career. I'd like to thank Pacific Trucking, Fleet Services, Pacific Unlimited, IP&E, Payless Supermarkets, Green Group Holding, Pepsi Cola Bottling Company of Guam, my mom, dad, and my sister Jordan. All right, congratulations. Stay tuned to our next Dar Red Zone Athlete of the Week. KUAM Sports Athlete of the Week is brought to you by... The 2017 IFL football season kicking off tonight with Southern High taking on Sanchez at Ukadu at 7 p.m. Teasing will be facing Guam High at Guam High at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, JFK will take on FD at the UOG field at 10 in the morning, followed by the Ukadu and GW game to be held at Ukadu at 7 p.m. Keep it with football news. The UOG Tritons football reunion, open to all players, coaches, and cheerleaders, will be taking place Sunday at 5 p.m. at the House Angels field in Dedido. Bring your Tritons football jerseys and memorabilia and memorabilia and share your photos and film. For more info, contact Brian Cowboy Leon Guerrero at 685-8325. All right, now for some programming news. This Sunday, August 27th at 10 in the morning on KUAM TV 11, NFL on CBS. Preseason football action is the Battle of L.A. The L.A. Chargers taking on the L.A. Rams. And on Monday, August 28th at 10 in the morning, on KUAM TVA, NFL on NBC, more preseason football for you. San Francisco 49ers heading to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. Put $500 in your backpack during Nissan's Back to School Relief event. Purchase a new Nissan with payments starting as low as $76 per pay period and get $500 cash back. School supplies, uniforms, lunches, load it all up in a new Nissan, including the kids. With payments starting as low as $76 per pay period and with $500 cash back, you get an A+. For more Back to School deals, go to NissanGuam.com or see your favorite sales associate at Nissan Upper Tumon. I'm here to announce the launch of McDonald's new signature sriracha sandwich, and they decided to turn it up. It's topped with crispy onions, fresh baby spinach, and kale. Onions and baby green. That's not all. They decided to turn it up even more. They created an exclusive sriracha mac sauce with just the right kick of spice. Yeah. Right for real, for real. Yeah, but it's here only for a limited time. The McDonald's signature sriracha sandwich. Where are you going? Go back happy with Triple J. For a limited time, receive a free $500 Kmart gift certificate on selected new vehicles from Triple J Auto Group. Get the car, the savings, and the supplies just in time for school. Zero down at 1.9% financing on top of the class deals like the Kia Sportage at only $161 per paycheck or the Mazda CX-3 at only $145 per paycheck or an all-new Ford F-150 for only $266 per paycheck. Get pre-approved instantly at TripleJGuam.com. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. Stop by today at Triple J Auto Group. Customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday to you, Gwendolyn Chandler. Lots of hugs and kisses to you all the way in Washington. Hope you're having a wonderful birthday. We love you and miss you so much. Gwen, love always your family here on Guam. 
Edward Mandiola, happy birthday going out to you from your wife and family. Happy birthday, Alexa Rochelle Jesus. And happy birthday to our very own Michelle Moser. And of course, it was a busy day, so I didn't have time to put his photo <laughs> up there. I apologize, but happy, happy 11th birthday to my son, my oldest, Kevin DeLalo. All right. And it's time to announce the winner of our <laughs> yummy Goldstone Creamy birthday cake. We're just waiting for the name. Right. Whoop, whoop. The winner is Jonathan John Quintaniza. Congratulations. A rep will be contacting you on how you can redeem your cake. And that's going to do it for us here on the news desk. Stay tuned. Breeze next with Extra. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion. Hi today, everybody. I'm Jason Salas. Thank you so much for watching KUM News Extra on KUM TV or streaming on Facebook. We do appreciate you tuning in. Two friends of mine are in studio right now, and we are.